I, I would just uh, do a quick response uh, before I sort of uh, um, have everyone sort of comment on, on a couple of things of what they've shared uh, with each other. Um, I, I, I think for me, I, I kind of like what Danny did. I mean, I don't think it was intended, but I, I love the fact that um, when he said, on when Cosmin announced that he was going to speak in Cantonese, three quarters of the room scurried back to take um, the translation equipment. Um, which, I mean, which is something I've been thinking about the last two days as I was listening to a lot of the, the sharing and the presentations was the question of limitations. And I remember when I was involved uh, in, in a project uh, years ago with Theatre Works with uh, Ong King Sen directing a, a performance called Desdemona um, that was written by Kishida Ryo based on Shakespeare's Othello um, that involved both p uh, performing artists, actors, dancers and visual artists. And of course in the rehearsal process the visual artists complain that half the time they can't do the the work because there was a lot of improvisation involved. And, and therein lies the limitation between the, the performing artists and the visual artists who, who needed to, to go into a room to, to put the material together to bring to the floor um, for the rehearsal to happen. And, and in that sense, for, for me, I, 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 I think which also led to a lot of the limitations of, I think, a conference like this or a lot of the other conferences that we've all been involved in. And, and which is, which is the, 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 the fact that, you know, we can only talk about it so much. Um, and in fact, half the things that we have heard or heard, we would already have heard half the time. And, and I myself have been involved in too many conferences to know that actually at the end of the day, what is the fucking action plan post the conference? and moving forward. And, and Danny brought this up very, very elegantly in a sense that at the end of the day, you know, where is the intervention, you know, whether at, at, be it at the public institutional level or any institutional level, uh, the political agendas, the economies that, that, con that confines a lot of our practices and a lot of our decisions, um, whether in a curatorial practice or whether is it within the artistic practice. And, and, and in some sense, you know, it, it's also something that both Martin and both uh, Xavier also brought up yesterday, that, you know, what is that... N I mean, this is cliché to say what is the new paradigm, right? To, to sort of shift towards... I mean, we're talking about this since... I don't know when, since we were in school or something, you know, but, but the, the, the point here is that then where is that commitment? You know, I mean, I, I just finished organizing my very first uh, sort of forum, you know, with the West Kalu, and I just joined um, the organization two months ago. And we were very clear that we didn't want to sit around a table. And we're talking about new writing for the theater. And we were very clear that we didn't want to sit around a table talking about problems and problems and more problems and challenges and complain. First get go, we said, what is the action plan? What is the solution we want to come up with? And, and I, I think in some sense, this leads to the question of, you know, as, as, I mean, most of us here belong to a public institution or some institution. And, and therein lies then, what is the responsibility of your institution, say, not at the global level, I, and, and I think, you know, we've, we've had this in the last, in yesterday as well, that we don't want to talk about gene the, the, the general, the gen generics, but down to the specifics. So it's also a question of asking, um, you know, like Catherine for, for Tate, then what is the responsibility of Tate for London, for the people of London, or even Greater London, you know, um, uh, and for, um, you know, all of us, then what is that responsibility and the response moving forward? Because, you know, I mean, and Fulquent's intervention yesterday of, you know, that, and I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the question of marginalization or saying that you put yourself in the marginal position. But then it is, it, it is a very real question of, I think, and Dorian and I were talking about early, earlier, why have this conference in Hong Kong here? You know, I mean, in, in, in a sense, this could happen in any room in any part of the world. Then, then my, my provocation really, and I will ask, you know, my, my fellow colleagues to sort of respond as well, then what is then your response and your responsibility moving forward? Because tomorrow's the third day. Uh, it's going to be over in like six hours. And post that, what's going to happen? 
Yeah, and this is the question I'm going to ask Cosmin as well. You know, so what is Parasite's responsibility as well? You know, in, in doing these international conferences. So maybe I just want to open to the panel as a response, if you if if you will, or even to each other um, sort of presentation. Thank you. My first response would just be to, I can't directly quote him, but there's a very populist art, I would not say critic, but that's what he defines himself um, as, called Jerry Saltz in New York, who um, frequently refers to MoMA curators as people who fly around the world going to conferences. So, you know, the question is, if MoMA is the canon against which institutions like Tate Modern and M Plus are defined, um, how can our institution evolve and tell other modernisms, other global histories? Um, we've got to start traveling and we have to start listening and we have to start you know, having tangible conversations where we listen and we're not telling, which is what MoMA's role had been traditionally when it did have international touring programs. So um, I think this, you know, there is a resistance to that in New York. I think a lot of people would like to see the Museum of Modern Art tell only the classic canonical history of Cubism up until abstract expressionism and just stop. And I think that would be a, a crime from our point of view. Storian or Catherine want to... Yeah, Catherine, who's, who's probably the most dominant here at the moment because uh, uh, image-wise, you, you're like, you, you, you're a goddess, you know? Oh, that's very kind. It's a bit scary. Um, the responsibility, I mean, I raised the question of authenticity in displacing performance as a traditionally, traditionally antagonistic form into the museum, which was one question. But the flip side of that question is a responsibility to represent art history and to represent contemporary art practice in the museum through including performance. Right very simply. And that feels like a strong responsibility in terms of bringing, bringing performance into the conversation and into, I mean, into the canon, I guess, and not creating this segregation of additional programming versus core programming. But I really, I was rereading um, Capro's conversation with Smithson about museums in 1966. I don't know if you've read that, where I think, Smithson like creates a reminder that the museum doesn't well museumness is not necessarily a bad thing in the sense that it is a, a strange ritualistic space with different order of experience than everyday life. He said it seems there's now a tendency to try to liven things up in museums that the whole idea of the museum seems to be tending more towards a kind of specialized entertainment. It's taking on more and more the aspects of a discotheque and less the aspects of art. So I think the best thing you can say about museums is that they're really nullifying in regard to action. And I think that's one of their major virtues. But I think it, you know, and what I was trying to get at and what I'm saying is uh, the museum's mausoleum-likeness and its focus on objects has always been seen as this antagonism with liveness. But how how do we look at the two in a continuum as a way of reflecting, you know, as, as a space of aesthetic reflection, that they don't have to be against each other, but they're both formats of aesthetic experience. I mean, in telling a history of modern art. Uh, <laughs> sorry, this is hard. It's hard to have a conversation because I can't see your faces. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we should shift the, the I don't know. Can you bring that Maybe. Well, it's, it's the limitation of the wire is not long enough to come in front, so. Sorry, Catherine. It's okay. No. The responsibility for me feels to be, even though, like at Tate, we now have the tank space in the basement, how not to perpetuate performance as, you know, the basement activity that has no relationship to the canon of value in the permanent collection. So how to make these things occupy the same spaces conceptually and practically. And for me, the pressure that bringing performance into the object spaces puts on the institution forces these changes in the institution. So that's, it, it's to accelerate that pressure, I guess in order to create a place where 
we are dealing with the reality of art practice instead of an old idea of art practice that's so object focused. How do we make it this, you know, a social space? And I meant to say, actually, in terms of the Lecky example, that growing, and it was very interesting in relation to what Stuart talked about, how does institutional critique shift into a more iterative play with instituting, like I said, as a verb? instead of deconstructing what the institution was, how do we reiterate it in new ways? Thank, thanks, Catherine. Um, I mean, I'm not going to put Dorian, who's a fellow colleague, on the spot, but I have to ask you. Um, I, I mean, in, in, in a sense, you know, uh, of course, you, 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 you drew the relationships or the parallels between sculpture and the body. And, and in some sense, that for me, it's, it's a very, very nice sort of metaphor, if you will, um, and, or at least at how I was reading it in, in a way, because the construction of M plus, if you will, I mean, not that you, know, you should represent M plus at this platform, but that the construction also represents, if you will, the, the potential um, for a certain potency, you know, to sort of, if you will, uh, invent or reinvent these kinds of uh, structures that perhaps, you know, like Catherine has been referring, uh, or even Stuart, that, you know, the, the, the constant need as institutionalized, you know, uh, mausoleums having to now, you know, confront this thing to shift and, and to break out. You know, M plus looks like it's building from scratch that you can invent or not have this frame. So, you know, I mean, what, what would you see your sort of response or your role. I mean, very much, I mean, in a sense, it, it's now visual culture. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite clearly branded as a, muse, a gallery or museum for visual culture, which is hoping to expand. But in some ways, it's also very much located here in Hong Kong, and which is just next door to China, so. Well, I think I can answer that in multiple ways, but we're at, we're at least conflating two different questions, which we're sort of, you know, naturally slide it into. Um, so maybe I will try to get to that a little bit later, but then the, the first question about the institution and its local context and why is performance removing bodies uh, an urgent issue in New York, like at MoMA in New York, and I think that's different from at Tate in London, right, and possibly what it will be at M-Plus in Hong Kong. And we have the, I have the luxury of not having to really respond because we don't have a space, you know? Um, <clears throat> But uh, but I think you know what I was thinking in my totally sort of off the mark kind of talk um, in this context. But then by the time Danny spoke, I realized that there is actually kind of connection. And I think even though it was such a rambling, free associative lecture, I think the posi position position that I was also suggesting is that uh, as first, as an individual curator, you are shaped by your experience and the various privileges that we have had by being associated with different institutions, right? And I think I have a certain kind of solidity of historical understanding that some might think are old fashioned or whatever because I was a painting and sculpture curator at MoMA, right? And while there is a certain resistance to that, I think it still forms a kind of a backbone, which I guess I carry with me. And what interested me in coming here and, and still thinking about that certain backbone of past education is to not think in binaristic terms, but in the circular and um, sort of much more porous terms. That is, you know, when you, there's, it, this binary between just simple West and non-West, West and the rest is not interesting because we are in the business of building a contemporary institution. You know, uh, people have been modern here almost as long as people have been modern anywhere else. You know, people have had experience of institutions. So being able to speak about um, whether 1960s Japan or 18th century Italy 
or 1960s China or 2010s China are not separate things, but they are all connected to one another. And I guess so as an individual curator, this is an important way that I am always trying to think that, that you know, we are, we are living um, in the moment with a historical consciousness where all of these things have always all mixed together. So that's sort of one thing. And speaking a little bit more about that, um, so while you and I talked about what is the idea of having this international conference in Hong Kong, you know, and that's how I can take meaning out of it. You know, it's not just by having two MoMA colleagues and a Tate Modern person and then, you know, other European colleagues and whatnot, and also from Latin America. Um, but, you know, I approach it with this idea that um, if their pertinence of being in Hong Kong at this moment is not clear immediately, they will be, you know? And then for them, the pertinence of being here is not clear other than this network of, uh, um, you know, collegiality that we operate in this business, but they will carry with them and, you know, it will be more than, oh, I've been to Hong Kong, you know? So I guess that's how I will first answer the question about being in an institution or building an institution in the particular context of Hong Kong. Um, do you want me to go on to the next one? Because it's too long. I can come back to it. Yes. Anna? Yeah. I, uh, maybe I can just follow up on what Dorian said and also uh, answer to, to, to your first question. And I realize that maybe all the things that most of you in, in the room know, but I realize I've never been introduced properly. So, like, there was my function is the, uh, my role is the associate director, uh, associate director, oh my God, associate uh, curator of uh, performance at the Media and Performance Art Department uh, at MoMA. And um, of course, I'm here wearing that hat, but um, what was, and but on the other hand, I'm wearing also a hat of someone who co organized this conference together with, with, uh, with Cosmin. And uh, I think this is also our responsibility, I, I feel it also a part of my responsibility of, of having this exchange with, with Cosmin and a lot of people who are here in the room and of deciding also, as, as we mentioned yesterday in the introduction of so many conferences, and we know that, as you said, so many conferences, what's the action plan and so many discussions, so many panels. In New York, there was in the last two years, there were so many panels about dance in institution you can't even imagine. And so it was, we felt our responsibility to say, okay, let's try to find some answer, to unfold that in a different way, inviting, as, as, as uh, Dorian just said, maybe a certain network of co colleagues and peers with whom we work before, or two of us, like, we, we did a lot of us work together here, but I think, you know, the action plan is not maybe making a show after that or making a book. It's, it's really it's, it's really thinking, and I think this is responsibility of, of questioning and, and, and being aware that, okay, we are in the big institutions, and this is what we said yesterday. It is a global phenomena, but how much is a global phenomenon? How much is really concerns two major institutions, one in Europe and, and one in the, in the States? And it is our responsibility to ask that question, to share it, and to try to think so how performance can be in the set of the of the museum was Stuart said. So we don't want to be to, to have this, you know, and in, in a way there is not even a space for performance in the Alfred Bar diagram. So okay, so we, we, we are now trying to found our space. Like for example, the media and performance department has a media gallery but not a performance that has no space designated at MoMA at state is now is Thank Catherine gave her explanation of the, of the ritual, and he gave this really important also somehow history of how performance moved from the outside, from it like completely political potential to from the shadow to now on on, on the spotlight, and it's somehow this idea of the social and of think, the institution is thinking itself now of how to collect maybe and how the educate even the educational department to the whole idea of, of the performance and performativity. So I think this is our responsibility that is here. It can be criticized, it can be tricky, it's not easy, but I think this is what, what it's important that we are doing here. How much more time do we have, Cosmin? 
Really? Oh, no. Let's do it. I just wanted to ask a question, too, because you mentioned the term visual artists, and I'm really keen to drop the word visual from the conversation at this point. I think, you know, the word skin came up several times in different talks. The whole issue of a haptic experience has now become a defining element of all contemporary art. And I think, you know, there have been at least four conferences on synesthesia recently, but I think, you know, this notion that art is moving into a space where, you know, the visual, the sensorial, the physical are all somehow in tandem, I think is a really critical thing to understand. And um, I actually had forgotten to include one other slide, um, which was another work that's up in the biennial at the moment by an editorial collective called Triple Canopy working in Brooklyn. But as part of the project, they did a 3D printed scan of a wash basin that's in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum. But I think if you begin to think of the idea that data can now take physical form in that sense, and what they've done in that project is really chart the movement of objects and the data that accompanies them in museum collections and distribution uh, systems, you know, kind of they've followed that across all of these different digital processes that all museums generate. So any object, any person, any action, anything that now takes place in a museum generates millions of images and online experiences and digital encounters. So I think that's something in a global networked conversation that we also have to really start thinking about is that relationship between the live body and the digital image or after image. Um, and Oh, great. Okay, yeah, sorry that I missed yesterday. But I think, you know, this idea of fetishism that you and Catherine brought up is super interesting. And I think to, to draw that into a, the digital shift is equally interesting anyway. Could I, <clears throat> could I just say that I think what you've just said, Stuart, relates to what Dorian uh, was proposing about sculpture as an alternative to the object and the self-presentation as sculpture. It was making me think not just about, you know, Bruce McLean pose work for Plintz or, or Irvin Verm or, you know, living sculpture in a literal sense, but also the kind of Kuhn's model of self as brand, um, objectifying the self in a capitalist economy. And that relates very much to this dissemination via other forms of data, I think. So there's a relationship between crystallizing or reifying the gesture into an object as it has been performed by Warhol or Coons and, and many others, um, and this total dissemination where there's no, you know, no original, just, just a proliferation of data as a, in a brand sense. I mean, we don't, yeah. I wanted to bring that into the performance conversation too, just because it's performance being anti-market <laughs> doesn't make sense for that. I, in the way I was saying about it, coming into the bright lights of the institution, I also think the market has to be part of that frame too. Not the same space, but an equivalent. One last comment following that up, but I mean, at the same time, you have this proliferation of art fairs, which could just as easily be done online to a certain extent, and yet I think we all crave these spaces of congregation and, and yeah, some kind of togetherness, absolutely. which is a huge part of the social experience around the object that you discussed earlier. I, I mean, in, in a sense, for, for performing art fairs, it, 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 it is very similar, you know, in, in a way that you, 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 you sort of, you know, but sometimes, and, and this leads to a lot of discussion about time and space, because um, I was also clearly aware that, you know, when, when I shifted from working on, on uh, the, the uh, Biennale and into the arts festival, which was primarily a performing arts festival, I remember this very, very clear moment that whenever, in, when I was doing the, the Biennale, you know, when I go to an exhibition, you know, and somebody talked about this, about the control of your time, right? I can go into an exhibition and I can choose to get out and move on to the next image or whatever if, if I choose to. But I remember going back to watching my first performance again and I, and I remember sitting down, crap. I'm stuck here for one and a half hours. I can't get out if I wanted to. Of course, you, I mean, it's rude, but, but of course you, you, you can choose to get out. And, 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 I, and I think uh, Xavier mentioned, you know, that actually the, the, roles, the, the, the sort of choice, I mean, it, it's kind of reverse of what, I, what, what he's mentioning. Uh, but but I, I think back to, back to, I think, what Danny mentioned and, and really the bring up the market, um, it's really... You know, so you mentioned about the games, you know, and, and, and I think this is where 
you know, it, this is critical in a sense that it's also what do you choose um, uh, to forefront, if you will, you know, um, in this context of that proliferation of data and of the lie presence and so on and so forth. And, and that is kind of a critical... Um, I, I, it's not a liminal space for me, Catherine, but it's so real that... Because I, I think as those of us who are, are in institutions, every single moment of our existence within the institutions, we confront these sort of decisions, you know, uh, with multiple sort of competing agendas, if you will, that sort of pull us and say, at which point do we push this forward and pull that back? And, and I, I think in a way, in so far, I don't think that has come up uh, quite yet. Um, and maybe later in, in, in the plenary at the end, you know, you guys can, or oh, in fact, it's, it's everybody who spoke today, right? Um, can also begin to illum uh, illuminate towards some of that. Because I, I, I'm still obsessed about the action plan, not ex to make an exhibition, because I'm, I mean, we're not interested in that, but really, you know, in that, in that spirit of collaboration, or as Fuquen calls it, the, di the genuine dialogue, where is this space that we will all commit um, toward? And, and I think that, you know, with, with, with a certain clarity of that, that is crucial for me. I mean, at, at least, at least in, 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 in my responsibility, if you will, to being part of this conference, you know, that I commit to, I think, this dialogue that, you know, that we all should have and not, after tomorrow, we all go home and we have, we have each other's cards and that's about it, you know. Yeah. So maybe, uh, Danny, you want to say? Yeah. So, uh, actually, I was thinking, uh, when we talk about how to build institutions, uh, we are talking about uh, from the existing point of view of our existing institutions, how we review ourselves. Uh, I'll give you one example. In 2011 and 12, I organized two conferences. And I made it very clear that it should not be more than 60 people uh, so people can actually really talk to each other. And I focus mainly on no opera and queen opera. Both are uh, intangible cultural heritage performing arts uh, designated by the UNESCO. And I invite them to come in to major institutions. There are six major Kun Opera companies in China and six major No Opera uh, company in Japan. Uh, so I s select one of them. And then I invite a museum from each uh, nation, from China and also from uh, Japan. And then I invite uh, an, an academic institution to come to the picture. So there are about six way of, I mean, there are six way of dialoguing going on. They really should talk to each other. They really should talk to each other, but they have not been talking to each other. But some of the issues they brought up, which may be related to uh, what we have been discussing, one is about space. Uh, how No maintained its space throughout 600 years. Well, how Kun, I mean, you know, in 49, 1949, in 1967, and all, all the time when there's major changes, it keeps changing the usage of venues and space. So uh, when technology comes in, so the Queen Opera Company will use mic to sing, while the no maintain uh, that they don't want to use mic. Uh, so we compare architecture of both uh, 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 both uh, 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 form of opera. And then we we'll also compare funding, strategic planning, research. So when they start doing that, then we can see how we stimulate institutions to start rethinking about where they are and where they're going. So comparative kind of a, 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 a dialogue also needs innovative structuring in organizing a conference. Uh, then how do we do that? And we need to do homework before and we need to do aftermath homework. Uh, otherwise, it's just a one-shot thing, everybody talking about their own thing, their own stories, like what I did. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think there's so much we can learn from each other, but a lot has to do with if we do it in a good start with good planning. But this goes back to, again, uh, two things uh, before I forget. One is uh, I'm on the board of West Kowloon, 
and both these two chap are uh, uh, major staff in West Kowloon. Uh, when I got involved in West Kowloon, it was 1999 uh, when it got first got introduced, and then in 2006 I I I blushed at the uh, government, and so they have to turn the whole thing upside down and start over again. Uh, I think my major, major concern is that when we build institutions, we must study the governance, we must study the financial plan, and those are the two issues. I hope we bring in people with vision that can really launch a totally innovative cultural institutions that doesn't exist in the world. So it is a blank piece of paper. So we are not copying from existing structure. Uh, governance is very important. Policy maker, I mean, uh, eventually there will be so many you know, advisory group and board and all that, and the structure, how it's being structured. Those are the most challenging thing. And if we set a good example, we are setting a good example to China. If we set a bad example, and China will copy all the worst kind of uh, governance from all over the world, okay. And they just want things big, they just want things that has names, and, and they just want to build brand without any substance. Okay, so this is the part that which I think it is very important to the future of West Kowloon. It is a blank piece of paper, but how do we really, really understand the basic institutional uh, uh, culture uh, in the West, in the East, and we start thinking that, ha, huh, perhaps Hong Kong can become a new platform can be a bridge. We can be totally innovative. Uh, how do we do that? So it takes very innovative uh, you know, uh, uh, staff uh, to lead the program. Uh, but I worry so much about uh, when we keep thinking about just projects and program, and not so much on, say, what is its relationship uh, with the long-term cultural development Globally, regionally, locally, okay? What is the relationship? How do you build this? And if we don't have this awareness, and, and uh, by understanding the uh, relationship, we must do a lot of research and study because China is, is so uh, inscrutable in some way. I mean, you know, uh, but on the other hand, China's institutional development is constantly moving on. Right now, there's so much uh, money plunge into institution development of culture, okay? And they are aware, but the problem is that there's a huge lack of uh, middle level staff. Uh, there are a lot of good drivers, but they don't really know how. But they, and there's a lot of visionary uh, top leaders, and, but they don't know how. So, so what will happen is that, uh, you know, it's like a big lab, it's very chaotic, uh, anything can happen. It seems like there's a lot of space, it seems like there's no space, okay. Uh, and I, I, I sense that it's going to make a major difference to the world uh, because if you know the cultural investment <laughs> in China, then you will know that if they want to really do something, uh, if they do it right, it can really help the global development. So coming back to the last uh, part about suggesting to Cosman, uh, of, uh, <laughs> because we're talking about, um, I covered the, you know, I, I think research is very important, okay? Uh, networking, of course, uh, he should start evaluating uh, this networking uh, uh, building of this particular gathering. What went wrong or what went right, okay? And how to sustain uh, this kind of networking. And, and what theme? that are all on what subject he can network different people, start doing joint projects. And I think there are sufficient resources, Cosman, uh, not from Arts Development Council, but actually from West Kowloon, okay? Uh, both in performing arts and visual arts. And I think uh, uh, I have pushed so much on support on infrastructure development for West Kowloon. So if they don't support this kind of project, then it's their major problem. The other is the uh, uh, HAB, the Home Affair Office. This is the major institution in Hong Kong. Uh, I think uh, we just learned that every year there's uh, 3.9 billion uh, investment into the cultural you know, sector. 3.9 billion, okay, for the population of 7 million. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, more than uh, most of the countries in Europe. Uh, uh, per population. Uh, 
what went wrong? Why are they not supporting a uh, parasite? I, would, I really want to find the answer. Uh, but you cannot sit there and say that Arts Development Council is not supporting us this year. And that's it. You can't do that. You have to find out what's wrong. Because only by finding out what's wrong, you can change it. If you don't change it, what's the point of sitting around? I mean, uh, the system is designed by people. Uh, the system doesn't just pop out and uh, governing us or influencing us. Policy is the same thing. Okay, I stop. Yes, thank you, Danny. <laughs> At this point, I, I think I think we'll stop because we're running out of time. But we will do the questions. I think with with the plenary. If there are any quick uh, sort of questions, we can take one or two. If not, then we can do it at the plenary after the short break. No? I... <laughs> Lovely. I just want to thank uh, my, my fellow panelists, uh, and then I'll hand it over back to Cosmin. Thank you, uh, Ki Hong, and a round of applause for uh, this very lively uh, discussion, and thank you all for your presentations.